This is Vodcast 5, and this is where we're going to start to get into the mineral properties that you're going to be able to use to identify a mineral. So that's really the objective of the next four uh, or so vodcasts, is to familiarize yourself with the different properties um, that we can use to actually identify a mineral. Now, a couple things first. Uh, most of these minerals are perfectly safe, um, but you should never, obviously, eat them. You should not taste them. Um, after handling them, you should not touch any sensitive skin like your face, uh, your eyes, because some of these uh, do have some properties that are not very good for you. Uh, also, some of these do have sulfur, and that's a common thing that you, uh, some students may have allergies to. Um, so if uh, any of those things pop up, like you know that you're allergic to sulfur or certain things, I do need to be made aware of that. Uh, also, Make sure you always wash your hands before you leave um, or before you go to the bathroom. All right? You don't want, again, these chemicals on your hands and then touch your face or any other sensitive skin. So with the safety part out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and get into this. Again, the objective here in the next four podcasts is to learn the different properties that you can use to identify minerals. Now, I've got a couple things out or samples out here. And the first thing that students usually jump to to identify something is the most obvious, and that's their color. So I've got an orange piece, a blue piece, clear, green, brown, white. Now, color is very obvious, and sometimes it's very helpful, but more times than not, it can actually get you into trouble if you're trying to use it to identify a mineral by, all by itself. This is a good example. These six samples that you have in front of here are all the same mineral. They're all a form of calcite. So since these are all uh, the same mineral, I hope you can see why color is not a good way to go about identifying it. Now, I'm not saying it's not completely without use. For example, it's a piece of sulfur. Sulfur is always this bright yellow. Uh, you have malachite. Malachite is always this deep green. And things like Cobalto calcite is this pink and can be very, very useful all right, to identify it. But things like this, um, like calcite and most minerals, can actually have more than one color. And uh, one fact that you really need to jot down in your notes here is why. Why can a, a mineral that is the exact same chemical formula, these are all calcium carbonates, which means it's one calcium atom and a carbonate radical, a CO3. Now, if you take this mineral, and if you were to look at its uh, complete makeup, you would see that every once in 100,000 or maybe a million uh, molecules, that calcium atom is actually replaced with what, with what is known as a trace element. A trace element is just um, a chemical that shows up in very small amounts, trace amounts. And if you replace that calcium with, say, iron or cobalt or some other uh, element, you can actually change the outward color. It's not enough to change the chemical formula or any other main properties, but color can change. So you do not want to rely on color alone to identify something. With that being said, let's move on to the second trait that we're going to look at that can be used to identify a mineral. And it's called the streak test. Right, or the streak color. And what you're going to need, there are two ways you can go about doing this, is first we're going to look at using a streak plate. Now, a streak plate is a piece of porcelain. It could be white or it could be black. All right. And one thing that you need to know is that first it needs to be clean. You can't use the dirty one. So you could take this, run it under some uh, water, wipe it off with a paper towel, and it should be fine. Okay, may not be perfectly clean, but uh, this one will do right here. All right, so uh, one other little bit of safety thing with this, these streak plates since they're porcelain, if you drop these or break them, when they break, they tend to break into these curved pieces that are very sharp and can cut you. So. Try not to drop these. If you do drop these, there's a dust pan over by the uh, safety shower. You can uh, uh, sweep it up. Also, 
Since they can break like this, you never do a streak test while holding this in your hand. Because if you do and you, it does break, when you put a lot of pressure on these, it will cut you. So do not hold it in your hand. If I catch you doing this in your hand, uh, holding this in your hand while doing a streak test, you will be done for the day. So if you're going to do a streak test using a porcelain plate, <clears throat> you're going to hold it down with one hand, and then you're going to take the sample and the other. All right. Again, this is an orange outward color, and a streak test is basically seeing what color this would be when it's powdered. Now, the intuitive thing is to say would be that if this is orange on the outward, when it's powdered, it's going to be also orange. But when you actually test it, all right, really hard to see because it's a white streak plate, but if you run your finger along it, you can see that there's a white powder. This orange mineral, calcite here, is actually white when powdered. Take the blue one. All right. Also white. And if I just want to switch, because sometimes if it's white, it's really hard to see. If I switch to the black streak plate, okay, that one's white, that one's white, white, the brown, also white, clear, it's white, and the green, it's also white. So even though these co uh, minerals have an outward color that is different, since it's all calcite, they all should have the same streak color of white. Now most will streak white, and that doesn't really distinguish calcite from anything else, but it does give these things something that's in common. Um, for some other examples, all right, I could do, let's look at pyrite. Pyrite looks like gold, all right, it's heavy like gold, but uh, chemically it's very different. Sometimes this is known as fool's gold. And the way that you could tell whether this is gold or not is actually doing a streak test. It's one of the ways. Gold, when scratched and powdered, is going to still look like gold. But if I take fool's gold, pie right here, and streak it by pushing down hard enough so that it powders, it leaves a nice black streak. That is a distinguishing characteristic of pyrite, what separates it from actual gold. All right. So it can have a completely different outward color. Let's take a look at this mineral real quick. So that was, uh, using a streak plate is one way you can test, but sometimes you run into minerals like this piece of biotype that really don't scratch well on the streak plate, all right? They're just flaky, they break easily. So all we're trying to do with the streak test is actually cause it to powder. And you can take something harder than it, like a hard point or a nail, if a nail is harder than it, scratch it, and just wipe it with your finger. And you can see that it is black on the outward, uh, but it's more of a tan color. See that? When it's powdered. So that's the other way you can do it. As long as you are uh, scratching it and getting it to powder, then you can do a streak test. So this third and final test that we're going to look at here is just luster. Now luster is a very easy one to do. It is basically describing how the, uh, the object or the mineral reflects light. All right? And it can reflect it one of two ways. It can be either metallic or non-metallic. So if it looks like it reflects like a metal, like this piece of stibnite, almost looks like aluminum, very silvery, all right? that's metallic. Another metal is gold, all right, that would be definitely be metallic. Uh, let's see here, what else? Copper, all right, that's a good one. Uh, another piece of pyrite, it's kind of a cool one, also metallic, and one that's not as uh, shiny and bright, but still reflects light like a metal, all right, hematite. So those are all metallic lusters. You can also have things that are really shiny, but not metallic. So don't think metallic is always shiny and everything that's not shiny is not metallic. This piece right here is very shiny, almost like a piece of glass, all right? The glass is not a metal. So this is a non-metallic luster. Uh, let's see here. This piece kind of looks like it's a bunch of pieces of silk stitched together, all right? Shiny, but again, not metallic, so that's a non-metallic. Uh, it can be really sparkly, kind of like diamonds, all right, or little pieces of glass. 
non-metallic. It can have no shine at all, really dull or earthy, dirty to the touch. That is a non-metallic. It's like a pearl. It's a dolomite there, definitely non-metallic. And a couple others here, all right, waxy and kind of almost sticky looking, resinous. You can describe non-metallic in other ways. We're not going to get too much into that. Mainly, you need to be able to split it into either metallic or non-metallic. For the most part, all minerals, except for a few, are going to be in one group or the other. There's very few that straddle them. Okay? So there are the th uh, three properties. We did color, we did streak, and we did luster. Again, uh, make sure that you uh, guys are practicing safe uh, lab skills. You are not tasting these, not eating these, which shouldn't be a problem. Uh, you're not taking these minerals and then handling them and rubbing it on your face or any other sense of skin. And make sure you always wash your hands all right, after uh, handling these minerals and then before leaving class. If you have any questions or think something's unsafe, just let me know and I'll clarify. Otherwise, uh, practice this skill in the first of your hands-on mineral labs and then once you've mastered the skill, you'll move on to the next.